This program is brought to you by Cable Franchise Vs and generous donations from viewers like you. Hello and welcome to the Amherst Weekly Report with Amherst Media. I'm Asia Reed. And I'm Abby Gracie. By the fall of 2023, Amherst Public School students entering grade 6 will be attending Amherst Regional Middle School, according to the Daily Hampshire Gazette. The Amherst School Committee voted 4-0 to zero in favor of the change, the idea courtesy of Superintendent Michael Morris. Middle school once began at grade seven, but this change will allow the sixth graders access to sports, theater, and world languages sooner than before. Superintendent Morris recommended this change because a new school will be built to replace the Fort River and Wildwood Elementary schools, as they are depreciating. The new school needs to follow a K through five model, supporting 575 students by 2026, according to the Massachusetts School Building Authority. The Amherst Pelham Regional School Committee will vote again on the transition before curriculum and physical changes are officially put in place. UMass Amherst has hired a cybersecurity firm to aid with the investigation of racist emails sent to black organization groups on campus. On October 6, Chance Chancellor Kumbal Subhaswamy sent out a letter to students that Strauss Friedberg's digital forensics will assist with the information technology staff in the UMass Police with tracking down and identifying who sent out the racist emails to black students. Marty Meehan, the president of the UMass system, said that his office is also working to ensure the perpetrator who sent the email will be held responsible for the hate crime. Although UMass has hired a leading national firm in cybersecurity, Subhaswamy's email to students stated that the investigation will be difficult. The administration has yet to pinpoint the offender, but Subhaswamy stated in his letter, quote, I pledge to you that we will do everything within our power to alleviate the burden that these racist acts have placed on our black students. In doing so, we will redouble our efforts to foster a community grounded in justice, equity, dignity, and respect. As the investigation continues, so have other racist incidents on the UMass Amherst campus. One racist incident included hate speech being shouted at a black student by someone in a passing vehicle. In response to the racist occurrences, UMass Amherst is la launching the Black Advisory Board and hosting forums led by the Center of Racial Justice. As for now, no further emails have been sent to the UMass students regarding the investigation or hate crimes that took place on campus. Amherst will be receiving $11.9 million in federal funding, courtesy of the American Rescue Plan Act. The money will be used for a multitude of ways, like to help transition the Amherst sixth graders to the middle school, to build a public restroom downtown, to pay the salary for a diversity, equity, and inclusion coordinator, to lessen the impact from the COVID-19 pandemic, to create racial equity activities, and to invest in the water, sewer, and broadband infrastructure. Finance Director Sean Magnano proposed these ideas to the Amherst Town Council, but the public will also have a say on how they would like the money to be spent. There was a Zoom listening session on October 13th at 8 a.m. and 1 p.m., and there will be another on October 21st at 4 and 7 p.m. The Zoom links can be found on the Engage Amherst website or at www.engageamherst.org backslash ARPA. The town common in Amherst is one step closer to having a permanent performance shell built on the green space. The Amherst Business Improvement District, the BID's executive director, Gabrielle Gold, brought the idea to the town council. Gold expressed to the council the importance of art and culture to a community and how the performance shell could bring this to life. The Amherst performance shell will be a unique construction that will resemble an origami folded structure entirely made of timber. It will be 38 feet wide and 24 feet deep. The shell will aid in economic growth, tourism and promotion, and will be a place for performers to showcase their talent. On Monday, the town council has presented this information and, in, and agreed to refer it for review by a subcommittee. The outreach committee and town services will have their final report back to the council by December 6th. Until then, BID is figuring out plans for going about zoning and historic commission. They are also discussing the expenses. 
Gold spoke with Amherst Media about the cost of the performance shell. Gold said, quote, we will then launch into fundraising and would not break ground until we have the cost of the shell. The maintenance and programming fund is 90% secured. District councilors in Amherst have so far been impressed with the design and functionality of the structure. The Paradise City Arts Festival took place on the Northampton County Fairgrounds from October 9th to October 11th. An estimated 220 artists showcased their art pieces and the traditional central exhibit was displayed. This exhibit consisted of abstract art challenged art goers to view the world in a different way. The piece represented the global catastrophes and constant change of this day and age. Different types of art were displayed at the booths, ranging from woodwork, paintings, drawings, and more. All visitors had to show proof of vaccination or have had a negative test result within the last 72 hours. Face masks were also required for all visitors and artists. Art booths were placed far away from each other to create more space. Inside buildings had their doors open at all times and roof ventilation was also open to help with air circulation. Homeowners in Amherst could see a potential annual tax increase of over $400. Preliminary tax rate estimates provided to the Town Council by the Board of Assessors this past week stated that the average home's assessment is up to $404,700. This is in comparison to an average $375,570 assessment last year, and despite the fact that the projected tax rate is going down to $21.27 per $1,000 valuation, from $21.82 per $1,000 valuation. The average residential tax bill would be $8,608, an increase of $414 from this year's tax bill, as long as the town council doesn't use a split tax rate. If the council does decide on a split tax rate, commercial property owners would have to pay at a higher tax rate. Other impending decisions include deciding on offering an open space discount, a small commercial discount, and a residential exemption. Business owners in Amherst are endorsing an overlay zoning district to build a parking garage in downtown Amherst. Certain business leaders such as Recife Rafiq, owner of Bistro 63 and Monkey Bar, says in an interview with the Daily Hampshire Gazette, quote, I feel like the businesses in Amherst have sort of plateaued because we cannot have more people come to downtown on a regular basis year-round. There is simply not enough parking on and around North Pleasant Street for all of the customers who want to venture downtown. However, there is an area between North Pleasant and North Prospect Streets that have been observed for an area for a potential parking garage for decades. The Amherst Planning Board has been discussing the possible overlay district after hearing many positive comments from the discussion. They plan to propose a formal recommendation to the Town Council soon after further discussing all possible outcomes from having a parking garage in that space and what the garage will look like to fit that specific space. Boston drew crowds this weekend as a result of the first in-person Boston Marathon since April 2019. Benson Caputo of Kenya was the men's champion with a time of 2 hours, 9 minutes, and 51 seconds, while fel fellow Kenyan runner Diana Chemtai Kipyoge was the first place women's finisher at 2 hours, 24 minutes, and 45 seconds. Monday's race was the first one in more than a century that took place in the fall instead of its usual slot in Patriots Day in the spring. Last year, a virtual race was made available after the marathon was postponed and then canceled due to the pandemic. Runners were able to show proof of timing in completing the 26.2 miles in six continuous hours or less over the course of a week last September. This year, 30,000 athletes virtually took part in the event from around the world, making the combined in-person and virtual race total the biggest Boston Marathon in history. The in-person race had a reduced field size of 36% in comparison to years prior, and a rolling start was implemented in order to facilitate so social distancing. The marathon was a long time coming for the runners who took part, and the energy levels in Boston were definitely there to show it. Thank you for tuning in to the Amherst Weekly Report with Amherst Media. I'm Abby Gracie. And I'm Asia Reed. We will see you again at the same time next week.